Hi, my name is Terry Tyner with uh, Van Horn Aviation. Uh, today we're going to do a training video on how to remove and install the 206 uh, tow rotor blade bearings. I'm currently the Chief Inspector and the Flight Operations Manager, and I have with me... Hi, I'm Riley Riggs, I'm the Completions Lead. And... I'm Dietrich Schubert, I'm Repair Technician. Uh, Dietrich is going to do the uh, removal phase uh, of the video shoot and Riley will do the installation phase. Uh, a couple things to point out is this is all covered under our new tech bulletin 206-2200-1R1. You'll find that on our website uh, vanhornaviation.com along with this video. A lot of times what we're seeing is the tow rotor blades are being removed prematurely. There's a 15 thousandths limit uh, actual play limit on the bearing and that is indicated by a lot of play at the tip so your pilots or your technicians are going to be grabbing the blade at the tip and they'll see a lot of play they'll think that that's out of limits and just arbitrarily send the blades in for bearing change once we get them in here the bearings actually pass limits if you don't have a vibration issue with them uh, generally speaking you can go all the way up to the the 15 thousandths limit. So just be extra careful before you pull them. It might save you a dollar or two. This blade has the preform bearings installed in it. You want to be sure not to press it out from this side. You want to press it out from the stake side with the new style bearings. In this blade, has the older style bearings. They're staked on both sides. So it doesn't really matter which side you press them out from. Now for the tool, before I install it, I'm gonna make sure that there's, there isn't any excessive sealant on the end here so that the holes line up properly when you press out your bearing. And installing the tool, again, both sides are staked. I'm not too worried about scraping the insides of the, uh, the sleeves where the bushings seat into. You want to make sure it's together, it's seated properly. snug. Yeah, our our uh, technical bulletin in paragraph 1.2 gives you a list of all the tools. In there is an 11 16th socket they tell you to use to press the bearing out with. What you'll encounter is some of the 11 16th sockets are different diameters. So he's got a larger heavy impact uh, snap on here. Its diameter is almost an inch. Well that will damage the bearing bore in the root fitting. So pick an 11 16 socket that doesn't exceed 0.930 inches and you'll have no problem pressing the bearing out. Using a press, I'm going to press the bearing out. You want to make sure that it's centered and that it's not off to the side. That way you don't have any play while you're pressing it. Sometimes they could be on opposite sides with the preformed. So you want to pay attention as to whether or not you need to flip the tool over to the other side in order to press out the other side and not press it through that preformed section as to not damage the blade. So right there, Dietrich, I noticed you stopped and repositioned. What were you trying to accomplish right there? I'm just trying to make sure that it's centered because it doesn't always fit perfectly on the bearing. So you wanna make sure that it doesn't shift and then scrape the sides of where your, of where your uh, bearing. So it presses out So it presses uniformly. out evenly yeah. and doesn't damage the blade. That's it. Now for cleanup.
Okay, so here's the bearing that Riley's going to be installing. If you'll notice on one side it has a preformed lead, so it's already done with the chamfer. So on the early bearings you have to stake both sides. This one, you only stake one side. And that's what he was explaining about the bigger chamfer on the blades. You put the preformed lip down into the bigger chamfer. And then that allows you to stake the side of the bearing. Uh, before we get started, we are actually going to clean off our swage real fast as we don't want any sort of contaminant, it gunking up or it seizing, where it'll actually score either our bearing or our blade. And when it comes to installing bearings, you're going to take an MPK or any other um, equivalent solvents, and we're just going to clean all mating surfaces. All right, when it comes to choosing which side the bearing is going in, because we have two sides, we have a preformed lip and we have our swage side, we are just going to look for which is either bigger or deeper. And if it's kind of in between, you're just going to take your best guess of which one fits. So why do we want to know the, the one swage side is bigger or not? Um, as we're sitting here with a preformed lip, if we use a smaller side and we actually uh, butt it up, our swage lip will actually stick out and we take, stick our feeler gauge in there. Uh, we're not going to have a proper swage or seat. All right, we get started. Everything's been cleaned and wiped down. We're going to use Loctite 609. We are just going to add a little drop. And we're going to do 360 coverage all the way around. All right, as now we're covering Loctite, I have my sides picked. We are just going to insert. If it doesn't want to go in by hand, we do have a press over here that we can finish pressing it in with. So Riley, what is this tool used for? Uh, we use that tool to press in bearings if they're a little tight or if we just want to make sure that they're completely seated because if it sits up uh, a couple of thou when we actually go for our feeler gauge check, nothing's going to fit and then we either got to press it in more or we have to pop it out and get a new bearing. All right. And so it's just making sure it's seated. And just make sure it's seated. You can take a quick visual, uh, visual inspection to make sure that you don't see any sort of rises, because if you do, try pressing it again. If that doesn't work, we're gonna have to pull it out, uh, check to see if there's anything on the chamfers, and either switch sides or clean up the mess. And then when flipping the blade over, you have a preformed lip and you have a swage, uh, swage side. You just wanna put your thumb on, the, or your thumb, middle finger, whatever, on the preformed side, so as nothing falls out as they do fit loosely. When it comes to adding a little oil, we have oiled up our swage tool and right between the actual bearing and where our swage is going, we're just going to add a drop of oil. As we don't want to run anything dry, as it can scratch up our bearings, our swage, and just all, all around cause an issue. Alright, and so after everything's lined up, we're just going to turn our mill to low. And we're going to swage it down at six, um, 600 pounds for 6 seconds. So we're going to use a 5 thou feeler gauge, and we're going to do north, south, east, and west. And all I'm trying to do is see if it fits underneath it. If it doesn't, we know we're going to do good. We're going to do the low, uh, upper surface as well as the lower surface. All right, and we're all good on our swage. So the tolerance on that was 40% uh, where, where the feeler gauge can go in? Yes, sir. Now, what happens if it if if it if it's beyond that 40 percent? What do you do? Uh, if it's beyond that 40 percent, uh, if you have to re-swage it, max you can do is 700 for six seconds. But as we don't want to try to do that because if you overswage a bearing, it's going to be too tight, and then if it's too tight, you're going to fill it on a helicopter and you're going to have to pop it out. But what we can do on the swage is if you swage it one way, just rotate it 180 degrees and swage it again a second time. If that doesn't work, you can come back 90 degrees, and if the third time doesn't work, you can go up to 600 pounds or up to 700 pounds. 700 pounds. Okay. So you just position the blade mm -hmm. 180 degrees, so it's on, or 90, 9800, preferably where where it's not staked, yes. so you can just finish it off. Yes, as it comes to our mill, since we actually uh, check it all the way around to make sure it's flat, but when you come to a drill press, a drill press, it might not be 100% flat. That's you're going to need to start switching sides. Okay, so the the drill press it is allowed, but like Riley said, you got to be careful because it doesn't stay as true and that 40% tolerance that he was referring to, you'll likely get more of a gap there that you have to come back in, rotate it like he said, 180 or 90 degrees, 
find out where it's not true to get it down. If you have a mill, they center it, they make sure it's perfectly square, and he usually gets it right the first time, every time.